Hey everyone, this is Terakith, and I wanted to do another uh, Octatrack tutorial video. Uh, this time we're talking about recording triggers. Uh, one of my earlier videos I showed you how to record freely in the Octatrack and then go ahead and edit the audio file to fit uh, a known tempo. Um, in this case we're going to use recording triggers to save ourselves uh, a lot of those steps and make things a lot easier. So in this example what I want to do is I've got a pattern here in Octatrack, um, about five or six audio tracks, uh, audio loops, and one MIDI track that's feeding an external synth, uh, in this case Animog on my iPad, um, and that is going into inputs A and B here in Octatrack. So I'll go ahead and play that for you so you can hear what it sounds like. So that's the uh, external sound from uh, Animog. And these are all the internal sounds. Uh, real quick, because I mentioned the MIDI track here, uh, I've had a lot of people ask me the same question over and over again. They have problems uh, getting MIDI track set up to work correctly with the Octatrack. Uh, they can't get the Octatrack to actually um, transmit MIDI to their external synths. Um, so if I go into MIDI mode, you can see a MIDI track here, MIDI track one here. Um, is what we're talking about. Um, the really important primary you need to set is the channel for the track. Um, so if you double press the playback button, um, by default this channel will be set to off. Um, and in that case you can go say to the chromatic mode for the keyboard and you can play things, it doesn't make any sounds, it won't trigger external synth, the sequencer won't send notes to the synth, um, all that kind of stuff. Um, so you need to uh, double tap playback and change this to channel one uh, or whatever channel is appropriate for your project. Um, and then the important thing is you need to actually press the encoder down or press enter to save that value. Um, a lot of people don't realize that extra little step there and uh, they think they've got it set on the channel but it's not really locked in and that's why it's not working. Um, so now I can go into my chromatic mode. And I can play my external synth and the sequencer will send notes to the external synth as well. So just a quick tip there. Uh, so now I'm going to go ahead and set up my recording parameters so I can record all of those sounds in just one single 4-bar audio loop. Um, so function plus record uh, brings us into the record setup screen. The first parameter I want to change is recording length. Uh, by default it's set to max. I'm going to set that to 64. Um, it's 64 steps which would be 4 bars which is how long my pattern is. Uh, and the other setting is source 3 by default is always off. Um, I'm going to turn that till it says main. Um, and what that, will, what that does is it says that when we sample from Source 3, we're sampling everything the Octatrack makes uh, internally, as well as all the sounds that um, are coming into its inputs from external synths, uh, in this case, Animog and my iPad. Uh, the next step is to drop a recording trigger now. So I press uh, record to go into that mode and place a trigger on the first step. Uh, here's another kind of tricky part people forget. Um, I have problems. Uh, you have to hold down the trigger you just set and specify where you want to actually sample from. Uh, inputs A and B, input C and D, or in our case, uh, source 3, the, the uh, MIDI button controls source 3. You can see it reflected here uh, in the display. Um, and again, source 3 is set to main, so uh, anything I sample from source 3 will capture uh, the internal audio loops of the Octatrack as well as everything coming to the inputs um, from my MIDI synth in this case. So I've got a record trigger here. Um, once I press play, uh, the Octatrack will start playing back, and because this trigger is the very first thing, it'll start recording immediately too, um, and it record for 64 steps, um, at which point the Octatrack will start playback of the pattern again, um, once again triggering this record trigger, um, and the whole thing starts over again. So basically you'll, you'll keep recording four bar loops over and over again. Um, I don't want that though, I just want to record one four bar loop um, and have it perfectly trimmed. So once I press play and uh, playback passes this recording trigger, um, I'm going to go ahead and turn it off because I know that I'll still get my full 4-bar audio loop because the recording length is set to 64. So um, it'll make sense once we do it. So I'll go ahead and press play. I can turn this trigger off, don't need it anymore. And you can see the progress, uh, the pattern as it records, the little arrow. And then I got to the end, uh, the arrow basically turned off um, to let you know recording is done. Uh, a quick uh, little tip here for saving time is now I've got a recording, um, which you can hear, which you can hear in a second. Um, let's save it really quick. Um, function plus bank lets us edit the recording right away or save it right away. Um, so I'll scroll down to save, hit enter. I'll clear that name by pressing function plus play, and just enter. Uh, I don't know, we'll call it PO for short. And I want to assign that to a free flex slot. Okay, so that is a nice and easy way to save our sample we just got. Uh, I'm going to press exit to go back to the main screen, and you can see I've already got a playback trigger set um, here on the first position, so I'm going to mute the other tracks, 
because we don't need those anymore. Mute that MIDI track. Um, you can see uh, track four is the only one playing and that is what we're recording on. All the other tracks are muted. And that's it. We recorded uh, everything down into a single uh, audio file. I basically bounced everything down and now I freed up seven tracks um, plus my MIDI synth can be used for other purposes now um, as well. Now the same thing still holds true, the same process holds true. Say I just wanted to record just the external MIDI synth. I just wanted to record Animog. Um, I want to keep my audio tracks here, knock the track untouched. Um, what I would do in that case, uh, again, I won't go through the process, but I'll show you really quick, is go back into the record screen and drop my record trigger. And this time for my record trigger, I'll hold it down and instead of selecting source three main, I'll turn that off and select source, um, just the AB inputs. Um, and now I'm only gonna record what comes in the AB inputs or vice versa, um, the CD inputs. Um, and you can record both at the same time if you want. Um, so the process is the same if you're recording all the tracks down into a single track or just uh, an external track from another synth. Um, it just depends on what input you select for the recording. Anyway, I hope that was useful. Uh, if you have any questions, as usual, put them in the comments and uh, stay tuned for more videos. Thanks.